Ethiopia and Eritrea are two neighboring countries in the Horn of Africa with a long and complicated history. Both countries share a language, culture, and religion, and their borders have changed frequently due to conflicts and political developments. The two countries were once united, but a bitter history of war, annexation, and political tensions has separated them. Regardless of their differences, Ethiopia and Eritrea share a future that is intertwined and dependent on one another. Ethiopia is one of Africa's oldest countries, with a history dating back to ancient times. The country was ruled by a series of emperors, the most famous of whom was Emperor Hale Selassie, who was deposed in 1974. Eritrea, on the other hand, was an Italian colony until 1993, when it gained independence after a long struggle for independence. Eritrea was merged with Ethiopia during the colonial period, resulting in decades of conflict. Ethiopia and Eritrea have been at odds since the 1960s, when Eritrea began fighting for independence from Ethiopia. Ethiopia annexed Eritrea in 1962, sparking a 30-year-long bloodbath. The Eritrean People's Liberation Front, or the EPLF, was formed to fight Ethiopian rule, and the war ended in 1991, when the EPLF took control of Asmara, the capital city. Eritrea gained independence from Ethiopia in 1993, and the two countries split up. Eritrea faced numerous challenges after gaining independence, including economic and political instability. Ethiopia and Eritrea went to war again in 1998 over a border dispute, resulting in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. The war ended in 2000, but tensions remained high between the two countries. The two countries' border dispute has yet to be fully resolved, and there have been sporadic clashes between the two sides over the years. Fighting erupted in Tigray in late 2020, raising fears that Ethiopia was on the verge of a new civil war. However, only a few weeks later, the Ethiopian government declared the end of its campaign against what it called criminal forces in its northern region. However, there has been mounting evidence in the months since that the conflict is far from over. Despite an ongoing communications blackout, there are growing doubts that the Ethiopian government has regained control of the Tigray province. Along with reports of ongoing fighting and a clearly worsening humanitarian situation as people flee, there are also allegations of atrocities and war crimes. One of the most serious is said to have occurred in late November 2020 in the historic city of Aksum but it was the suggestion that the killings were carried out by troops from neighboring Eritrea, who are now widely believed to be fighting in the conflict, that made the story stand out. If these claims of Eritrean involvement in the conflict are true, which both countries deny, the presence of the Eritrean Defense Force in Ethiopia would seem remarkable given that Ethiopia and Eritrea were locked in a bitter territorial dispute until just a few years ago. But delve a little deeper, and the allegations of Eritrean involvement in the Tigray conflict become not only credible, but also highly likely. Ethiopia and Eritrea are located in the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia, at 1.1 million square kilometers, is the 27th largest of the 193 United Nations members and with a population of around 110 million, is Africa's second most populous country after Nigeria. Meanwhile, Eritrea is a mere fraction of the size, with a land area of around 120,000 square kilometers and a population of around 3.5 million people. I've already gone into great detail about the conflict in Tigray in two other videos, so I'm not going to go into it again here. However, to provide some context, the story begins with the overthrow of the Ethiopian military regime in May 1991, following a protracted civil war. 
a number of rebel groups formed the country's new government. The Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, was at the helm of these. As a result, despite constituting only 6% of Ethiopia's population and being the country's fourth largest ethnic group, Tigrayans rose to positions of power in the country's administration and military. This lasted until April 2018, when a new leader, A.B. Ahmed Ali, took over. He was hailed as a young reformer for breaking the TPLS grip on power and marginalizing them. The TPLF, on the other hand, maintained a power base in its home province of Tigray, from which they accused the prime minister of increasingly autocratic tendencies. In early 2020, things between the two came to a head. The Ethiopian federal government announced the postponement of planned national elections against the backdrop of the COVID pandemic. The TPLF went ahead and held elections anyway, seeing this as a deliberate attempt by the prime minister to consolidate his hold on power and won a commanding victory in Tigray. In the years since, tensions have grown between the federal government and the Tigrayan government, both of which now regard the other as illegitimate. Following an alleged attack by the, tensions erupted into full-fledged conflict. Tigrayan forces will land on an Ethiopian military base in early November 2020. A.B. Ahmed sent in federal armed forces to reassert control after deciding that the TPLS power had to be broken. And just a month later, the Ethiopian government announced that it had taken control of all the major towns and cities in Tigray, including the capital, Mikkel. These claims, however, are widely contested. Despite the communications blackout, it is clear that fighting is ongoing. At the same time, allegations have surfaced that Ethiopian troops were aided by troops from neighboring Eritrea. Aside from the Amnesty International report alleging their involvement in fighting and atrocities, the U.S. State Department expressed concerns about Eritrean involvement in the conflict and called for their withdrawal as early as December 2020. In February 2021, the European Union and the United States both reiterated their calls for Eritrean troops to leave Tigray. Both the Eritrean and Ethiopian governments, for their part, deny Eritrean involvement in the fighting. However, the general consensus is that neither the United States nor the European Union would have called for Eritrean withdrawal from Tigray unless they had credible evidence to back up their claims. But there's a deeper question at work here. On the surface, it appears strange that Eritrea and Ethiopia would be cooperating in Tigray given the two countries' long history of conflict. Aside from the 30-year Eritrean War of Independence from Ethiopia, which ended in 1991, the two countries were also involved in a brutal border war from 1998 to 2000, which resulted in tens of thousands of deaths and was only finally resolved in 2018. Despite their bitter history, Ethiopia and Eritrea share a future that is intertwined and dependent on one another. The two countries share a common language, culture, and religion, making cooperation and collaboration easier. Trade, transportation, and security are just a few of the areas where the two countries can work together. Ethiopia has one of Africa's largest and fastest-growing economies, and Eritrea has significant untapped natural resources. Increased trade and investment can benefit both countries, helping to create jobs and reduce poverty. Ethiopia can also benefit from Eritrea's strategic location on the Red Sea, which would provide access to the sea and reduce the country's reliance on other countries for trade. The two countries can also collaborate to improve transportation links. Ethiopia is landlocked, so its trade is reliant on ports in neighboring countries, which can be costly and inefficient. Eritrea's ports can offer Ethiopia an alternative route for imports and exports, 
lowering transportation costs, and increasing trade efficiency. Another area where the two countries can collaborate is in security. Terrorism and regional instability pose similar security challenges for both countries. They can share intelligence and coordinate their efforts to combat terrorism and other security threats by working together. Ethiopia and Eritrea have a long and complicated history that has been marked by conflict, annexation, and political tensions. Despite their differences, the two countries share a promising future. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't as it enables our content reach more people. See you in the next video.